I've acquired another piece of aviation audio equipment and in this video we're going to have a look at it and hopefully have a listen to what's on it because it's this thing behind me here and it still has the last cartridge in it that it played. Now I presume this is going to be background music. I featured another audio player from an aircraft a few years ago that had announcements on it as well as background music that was played while you were boarding the aircraft. This thing I suspect is just music and it might be in-flight entertainment music. I saw it on eBay and it was showing me the front view like that and immediately I recognised the type of cartridge that's in here. I don't know if you can spot that there. That is an RCA sound tape cart and that is a format that came out in 1958 lasted on the market to the mid 1960s so that really dates this as quite an old piece of equipment I'm not going to try and get this thing working for rather obvious reasons look at the interface on the back of there I mean this is just the transport then we attach that up to the amplifier and the control circuitry which would have been elsewhere in the aircraft now this is just a, a thing that spins the tape and I can do that on other pieces of equipment but we'll have a look inside see what's in here hopefully Hopefully get some more information about when this thing was put together and the date of it and the main thing I want to do is try and listen to what's on this tape I really hope there's something on it because if there isn't this will be a colossal waste of time let's get on with it okay so if we bring a regular cartridge in you can see that this is identical in size shape form and function the clear case was not all that unusual you could get regular off-the-shelf cartridges in clear cases as well but if we line these two things together we can see that all the notches line up perfectly so it's just a regular RCA sound tape cart with this cartridge you could have it play all the way to the end of one side and then auto reverse and play back again I suspect that's what's going to happen here if this is in-flight entertainment or background music you'll want it so that nobody has to deal with rewinding it so I suspect what's going to be on here is a mono recording because you don't need stereo for background music and we'll have a mono track going all the way in one direction and then another one going back the other way but we'll have a look at that more later so let's just take a look at the machine that we're supposed to play it in a little bit more detail now you'll notice this block on the door here that's designed to push in the braking mechanism in the middle there as the cartridge was pushed into the machine the brake would be pushed in like so which releases the grip on the hubs and allows the reels to spin freely let's just see what information we've got on the front of here it's the magnetic tape recording reproducer the model number is TR1880 the serial number is just 55 made for the FAA by Telectro Industries Corp Long Island City New York and according to this sticker on the top it appears it was last overhauled in April 1966 Let's see if there's any more information on the outside before I open it up time indicator adjustment fuse multi-pin adapter we can hear things rattling around inside which wouldn't be a good idea if we were trying to get this working one thing I'm looking for when I get in here is to find out about the head layout it should give me an indication as to what machine I should try and play this back on now I'd imagine that that would enable something to slip out I don't know if it goes forward or back I think it's a little bit bent to the front here which is going to help it there we go but we've still got our belt in here it doesn't look in too bad a nick as you can see when I spin this around everything's moving we're in here to look for perhaps dates if we can find any and if not at least look for the head arrangement see if I can see it through the door here every time I move this thing another bolt falls off it right so it is a bit tricky to see these are the two heads and they've got a felt pad in front of them which is blocking my view just see if I can get an angle on this to have a look at it yeah I'm pretty sure that that is a two track head and that would indicate that the one on the other side would be the same and I suspect that those are staggered so you'd have a four track cartridge now that could be configured in a couple of different ways if these heads are staggered rather than lining up like this they'd be like that so you get your four tracks there and if you were playing in this direction that would be track one and then it would play track two going back the other way and then track three that way and track four that way how quick the tape plays I don't know I suspect it's going to be 3.75 inches per second as would be standard for this system 
Another little bit of information here that I'm not too sure about. We've got these bulbs here at the top, and I think that might be an elapsed meter system, because if you look down below the bulbs there, I don't know if you can see there's a, a panel inside here with a couple of wires going off it, which might be some kind of light sensor. So if you have your tape in the system like this, loaded between those two things, of course, not much light will be getting through initially because the tape's blocking it. But then when it gets to the end, as it progresses, more and more light hits that panel at the bottom. And maybe there's some kind of meter somewhere to say how far through the tape they've got. Right, so we'll just have a look at this loading mechanism in action. You put the cartridge in the front, push it in until it clicks, close the door behind it, turn the lever to the left, which then drops the cartridge down inside the machine onto the two spindles here. The tape passes between the pinch rollers and the capstans and also between the heads and those felt pads. And then when you turn the lever to the right, it all pops up to the top and ejects out of the door. And it's a very impressive piece of equipment, extremely well made, massive metal weighty flywheels on here. The belt still being intact is very impressive as well. And look at these solenoids. I suspect that this thing will give a very satisfying clunk every time the playback was engaged. I was just about to put this away and spotted this again on the back, the time in edge hole. So let's just see where that lines up. So there's the hole on the back of the case. On the inside here, there's a potentiometer at the back there. I don't know if you can see that. And the fact that it's labeled up as time indicator adjustment makes me think that yeah this mechanism at the front with the bulbs and the sensor would provide some kind of readout of the amount of time that had either elapsed or was remaining on the tape for whatever reason. Right let's have a look at the tape. Right I think we should open this up. Now a few people might be wondering why I haven't used my magnetic tape viewer, the little device that lets you see what tracks are recorded on a tape. Well of course, I'm more interested in hearing what's on the tape than looking at the layout of the tracks, but also it's not always conclusive. You've got to get it on the right part of the tape. You might find yourself in between two pieces of music and it looks like the tape's completely blank. So the best system is really just to get the tape out and try playing it and see exactly what's on it. Right now you can see how the tape's looped around at the end here. So just a easy matter of taking it out of there. And I'm going to spool this on to this metal reel here. Okay, I've screwed the case back together again with the plastic slip sheets either side to make sure this moves nice and smoothly. And I think that's gonna work. So let's get the tape going and we'll set it into rewind and hopefully this will get pulled across. Yep, looks to be working just fine. Okay, so that's the tape spooled up, ready to go. Let's have a listen. And would you believe it, there's absolutely nothing on that tape. The volume's up to the top, there's not even a flicker on that needle there. When all the tape's gathered over here, I'm going to swap the reels over, play it back in the other direction to see what's on the other half of the tape. I'm pretty convinced though, there's going to be nothing there at all. Yeah, unfortunately, it's the same story on this side. There's nothing on this tape. Now, I should mention, due to the orientation of the tape, you have to put a twist in it once you take it out of the cartridge and put it onto a reel-to-reel -reel machine so that you're playing the correct side of the tape. Now, I also played it on my four-track machine, and I heard this. And when played in the opposite direction, that sounds like this. Again. It's very brief, so I'll play it again. again. And if you're struggling to make that out, it's a recording of a voice saying, say again. Say again. As brief as that snippet of audio was, it does tell me a bit of information about this device. It tells me that I was wrong in thinking that this would have been a background music machine or an in-flight entertainment player. No, this was something behind the scenes. This wasn't customer facing. The cartridge that we got out of there, the recording on it was at the position the tape had last been left in. The recording had been made in this machine. You can tell it's a recorder because we've got an input level adjustment as well as a bias control on here. Things that you wouldn't tend to need on something that could only play back. The recording on that tape had been done at the speed of 3.75 inches per second. So at that rate, 
one of these cartridges would play for a total of 30 minutes in one direction and then of course you could play or record back in the other direction and in fact there was another recording on the tape that ran concurrently with that one we just heard so let's have a listen to that testing now, I think that that recording was done by the aircraft surplus company that would have decommissioned this with the hope of selling it on to a future company. I think they've had it in stock for quite some time, though, because when they packed it up, they threw a load of stuff in off the floor of the warehouse just to shove in the box with it to keep it nice and safe. And in amongst those were quite a few of these things, which were parts lists. And this is for Pratt & Whitney aircraft. It's a carburetor kit. And it's dated 1957. So yeah, I think this has been sitting around for quite some time and I think they're very glad that somebody finally bought it. Now, what was its original purpose? I'm guessing here, I really don't know. My first thoughts were that perhaps this was something used on the ground. An evidential recorder to record the uh, chatter between the control tower and the aircraft. The only issue with that is though, that the tape doesn't really hold enough audio that is if you're recording continuously i'd imagine in most of these places though they'd have large real tape recorders running at a very slow speed you don't need them at 3.75 inches per second just for radio communication audio but perhaps this could be something that maybe someone would have next to their individual station in a control tower when they come in they put a tape in here and it records every time they press the microphone button Maybe that's why they need to know how much time has elapsed on here so they know if the tape's running out. But again, just, just guesswork. When I put this video out initially on Patreon, that was my suggestion that it was uh, some kind of evidential recorder, uh, quite a few people came back with alternative suggestions, some of which were based around uh, the fact that the device itself has these large, heavy flywheels in here. And the fact is that you tend to put something like that in a device that was moving to be able to maintain a decent speed. You wouldn't need it on something that was on the ground. I mean, it's a bit over-engineered for something that's just gonna be sat in a cabinet. And the fact we've got that uh, unusual interface on the back, that's the kind of thing that you'd only tend to find on an aircraft. So maybe this did belong on an aircraft. Another suggestion was that perhaps it was used for recording and relaying information about the weather or other pre-recorded information that pilots might need to be able to access all guesswork i'm afraid no solid answers here if you know what this thing was used for maybe you could put it in the comments or maybe just have a guess like i'm sure lots of people will do but i can't tell you if you're right or wrong i'm afraid i haven't got the foggiest unfortunately what i do know though is that this one really didn't work out the way i intended i was hoping to be able to get a, a tape that hadn't been heard for 60 years and we could all have a listen to what was on it it would be very interesting as it was, we got a pretty much blank tape and a load of questions. Well, you win some, you lose some. I mean, over the years, I found some very interesting things with interesting recordings on them that I've been able to show in the videos. Uh, but today just wasn't one of those days. Hopefully, I'll be luckier next time. Anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.